Hi guys, Oliver here from Spitfire Audio. Today we're going to look at how to write music for Thriller using Albion 4. I was inspired by tracks such as Sicario, Arrival, Mandy. Uh, those ones are by Johan Johansson. If you haven't heard them, please go and check it out, especially Sicario is one of my favorite tracks. The sounds in there are just insane. Another soundtrack I've been listening to is uh, Suspiria by Tom York. Really wonderful, crafted kind of soundtrack, really versatile as well. So let's have a quick listen what I've written and then we're going to go through the sections. The library is divided into two sections, Stevenson's Team DNA and the Albion Orchestra Uist Sessions. Uh, you also have the option to use the fantastic Jake Jackson mixes. So the Albion Orchestra is divided into brass high low, strings high low and woodwinds high and low. So if we dive into woodwinds high here, you can see that you can drag in here the main menus as I've done here. So I've dragged in phrases a tonal and then each of the key is an articulation so you can browse easily through your articulations and then here you get the name of the articulation so you can then go into the folder here and get these individual sounds out so you can play them in the relative key. Sound number one within the atonal phrases. Great sound. So this one was number five, rising staccato. So then I could go in here, phrases, and drag in uh, that articulation. Or I can equally go to the all in ones here and drag in uh, phrases atonal. And I'm just going to show you what happens then. So you get, uh, you get it in, in more detail. So here, for example, number five, rising staccato. So it's instead of having it on the keys, you have it here on the GUI. So you can float in whatever you prefer. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful, these sounds. All orchestrated by Ben Foskett. Let's have a look at what I've used. I'm starting the piece with the Woodwinds High, number eight, pulsing down. combining it with the low strings and the lows are really the strength of this library as you will be able to hear further into my piece. <laughs> really insane. And the beautiful thing is it's all recorded so these kind of effects and phrases would be really hard to program with a regular string or woodwind library. Then these steps, or my next section here.
really cool. The woodwinds high are really powerful as well. Air only, really sharp, cool sound. Overblown, also another one of my favorites. Strings high, moving trems. Scary stuff. And I was composing this piece late last night when, when everyone in the building left. And uh, here and there, it sounds like that. I would go, sure, no one's there. I'm using these high strings with a little bit of care because they very quickly put the composition into a horror kind of setting. And I want it to be like a little bit horror-esque, but mainly thriller and tension. And then these bra, oh, these low bras, they're really, really cool. Next up, I have these brass low stabs here. Really cool sounds. Very, very powerful. And this one really reminds me of the Sicario soundtrack somehow. I've treated it a little bit. So I've pitched it down an octave, but only using 50% of that signal, meaning I still get the original sound to 50%. So without, it sounds like this. With. So you can hear the low octave. If I turn up the blend, you only get the low signal. So I like that raspiness of the brass right there. And then here, let me just show you quickly. On the last hit, I've done something a little different. Let's have a listen. So I'm letting the notes disappear via a ping pong delay. And I've done that by sending a signal to an aux track via bus number five. And there I've inserted a stereo delay. And then I right clicked here on my aux track, create track, so I can automate uh, that stereo delay. So, and I've automated the high cut and left and high cut right. So it kind of takes out the high frequencies gradually and it disappears through that rather than just through volume. And here I've automated the bus, so I only want it to affect this last note. Again. And it goes into this uh, warped sound here. In this warped sound, we have these low brass bursts. So it almost sounds like they're kind of disappearing and then they're coming back, if you see what I mean. Right, what else is going on in this section here? Uh, we have some overblown stuff that I've already showed you. So both of those together, they basically create one texture. Also added a delay on these overblown notes there, just to help not really abruptly stopping with the brass there. Then just to take it to the next level, I'm adding some massive distorted sounds. Easter Island hits from our Albion One library. Without any of the plugins, it sounds like this. Amazing, the distortion plugin as well really makes the sound wide and in combination with those two sounds, it just sounds really fat and cool.
and then again the, the delay stuff to help fading out into the next section. Then high strings, they carry a little bit the horror elements again there. <laughs> Wonderful sounds. Uh, let me just play you some others so you get an idea what else there is. and back to my initial sound. Then for the next section, I'm using these glissandi, really kind of subtle sounds, really like them. A couple more of these atonal textures. Again, this stuff is absolutely unique and just very useful. So let's go into the land of warped sounds. Here I have uh, random low bursts, as you already heard with these brass. And I actually started a composition with this. So this low warped sound is carrying the main weight of the composition here in my second half. So let me just play you a note here. I don't really need to do too much to this sound because it has a lot of stuff going on and it has a lot of depth to it. But I'm adding a little bit of sub bass here, so without. Then with. You can really, really feel the difference if you have a sub in your studio. A bit of EQ here, just again to enhance my low ends there. And then here everything is in around C minor and here I'm adding a couple of other notes just to change the color a little bit. So I'm starting here on G, then E flat, B flat and back to G. And if we look again at the eDNA engine here, which is an engine and synthesizer where you have the freedom to tweak your sounds further. So you, you have your ADSRs, you have low high pass, uh, tuning, panning, uh, etc. You have here an oscillate mixer. So you, choose, you can choose two different sounds by clicking on this folder here and then it oscillates between these two sounds. You can change the tempo, you can decide how much you want to get into the sound. So if I have this all the way up, it goes all the way to the left and it loses the signal of the right sound. So I don't want it to be moving so much, actually it's a little hard as well here. So now you just get a little bit of movement, but you don't really realize that it switches between two sounds. You have a gate sequencer as well. Let me just show you quickly. And you can automate all of these controls as well by right clicking, learn MIDI control and assign your faders. And I can, for example, assign the, the gate volume and then play with that. So the gate sequencer kind of comes in and out, or I can uh, I show you in another sound, I've automated the tuning, etc. Then this is my other uh, warped sounds. So if you have just a quick listen to those two. This pad is slowly fading in. I show you how I've automated it. I've added quite a few effects here.
and then the sound fades out there. So let me take it from the top. Again, I'm using here the eDNA engine. Let's turn off all the effects here. And it's the Stevenson's times eight sound. Well, like stretched eight times, I guess. I'm using here this Alto Stratus pad. Already quite an intense sound, but then I've added some tremolo. I'm actually automating the depth of the tremolo. So the sound starts off with no tremolo. So you can see as I go along, I'm increasing the depth of the tremolo. So let's go somewhere here where it's quite high so you can hear it. I've changed the phase here to zero degrees. So instead of left and right, the tremolo goes back and forth. Then I'm doing the same with the tremolo, but keeping the face to 180, so it's left and right. So if I turn this one off, you can hear it left and right. If I turn both of them on, You get a very interesting pattern and almost it sounds like it's a gated sound right there. And as well, I'm automating my second tremolo here in the same way. So it's, it all starts swelling up together or the gate kind of kicks in towards the climax there. Then I'm also adding overdrive to the sound. Uh, distortion. And I'm automating the drive here, so it becomes a little bit more intense, again towards the climax there. So, and I've got my desired distorted kind of sound. Oh, and also I've automated the tuning here, as I was saying before. So if I wiggle my mod wheel here, you can see it detunes the sound like around 1.5 semitones. So let's start on its original pitch. And it gets quite intense. And usually the dynamic mod wheel would go all the way up to the right. Well, basically all the way up 100% or all the way down. So how I've changed this is by going in here, automation, MIDI automation. I wiggle this so I can see CC1. And here I'm getting Bay A tuning, which is correct, which I've done here. I've learned uh, MIDI CC automation there. And it goes from 50% from the middle uh, which is here zero. So when my mod wheel is down, I have it at 50% and when it's up, it's at 52%. So my whole length of the slider is 2% rather than 100% from zero to 100, uh, if that makes sense. And you can do that with any kind of automation here. So this little trick here is actually quite useful. So what else is going on here in this next section? I have these falling glists, which again, I absolutely love. I have automated the frequency a little bit. Sometimes by just automating a little bit, you can make the sounds interesting and less monotonous. Little answer there of the strings low, woodwinds high, playing Lisando. And throughout all of that, we have these really gentle gliss going on, so pont. We have scary stuff here with these forte piano strings.
And oh, this is just wonderful. These bassoons here against the warped sound, it just makes it really intense and to my ear, very thriller-esque. And what I've done here, so the warped sound is very lush and wide and reverby, and I needed some contrast uh, to have something a little bit more feasible and close to your face. So I've changed here the mic position. I'm using mainly close mic, very little tree, and uh, I find the result is really, really amazing. So really interesting sound there with the bassoons. I'm just going to play it for you separately. A couple of other sounds for you to check out. Amazing. Then again, I'm bringing back in these glissandi here. Filtered out. strings here called Lenio, which I've used here already before. Very, very amazing sound. And together with the woodwinds up here. Everything towards the climax, getting more and more intense, and then easing out here, as I already said before, automating the tremolo depth back to kind of zero, so th the sound goes back and eases out. And then I'm using a last sound here from the warped section, and I'm using the gate sequencer uh, for this one. So here I've chosen wood pads and down the rabbit hole, which sounds like this. And in the mix with everything else, it sounds quite nice as an end for this cue. Mixing wise, I haven't really done too much to it just yet. I've added a little bit of external reverb to some of the instruments, so for the high woodwinds for example, just to put them a little bit in perspective together with the high strings. On the low ends here on the brass, I haven't really put that much on there. Uh, I've put a little bit on, on the brass here, just I think mainly here for the last one too. just to have not an abrupt stop there and uh, to ease out into space there. Right, that's it for now. I hope you found this tutorial insightful. You've learned a couple of tips and tricks. I also hope you'll get to enjoy Albion 4. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section and we're always happy to help you. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.